Hi and welcome to Safe in the Real World. I'm Ahmed Said and today we're going to be looking at how we measure delivery in a scaled agile environment. Have you ever been on a project or a program and you're wondering how well you're actually doing? I know it might sound silly but that's actually a problem that I see in many many projects and programs. So stay tuned because that's what we're going to be covering today. In last, last week's video we looked at how we can measure value and how it is so context specific and yet we can take that um, something that's so subjective and find a way to make it um, uh, more objectively measurable in a safe environment as well. So let's have a look and see what are the three key measures that we need to think about when we want to look and see how fit effectively we are delivering uh, in our safe environment. So the first thing we want to be looking at is our delivery efficiency. So what do I mean by that? So how well are we actually delivering? Now typically what you may find is that many projects and programs use effort as a uh, indicator of how much and how well they're actually delivering. In actual fact, what I find is, is that that is not such a great way to actually measure how well you're actually doing. Now, the first thing is, is that effort's not a very good proxy for value. So it's quite possible I spend a large amount of effort but what I actually deliver doesn't have that much value in the marketplace. So that's the first thing. It's not a great proxy for value. The second thing is when we're using some, when we're using value or what I call value points, you can measure regardless of your delivery approach. Let me show you what I mean. Let's just say you, we have a waterfall project or a program and we are, let's just say this box represents the full set of requirements and let's just say there are 100 value points here that we've determined, okay? Now what we're doing is we're transitioning over to a waterfall approach, uh, an agile approach, that would be even better, right? Okay, so we're transitioning over to an agile approach and we've got these, these time boxes over here and we split up this big requirement set, right? Uh, into these smaller chunks, right? And we split them up, but equally we've also split up the value that's actually been delivered. So let's just say we've got, an, uh, we, we are now delivering, uh, say 25 points over here, 30 points here, 25 whatever right we can very quickly determine across regardless of the delivery approach whether our transformation has actually improved our our ability to deliver value in the marketplace which is so important so frequently if we look at effort it becomes very difficult because when we're using effort instead of waterfall environment that could be a completely different model to to uh, how we're using effort in a um in an agile environment, especially if we're switching from, say, um, hours to story points or some other measure as well. Okay, Let, ha, if you have a look on your screen, what you can see in ex example over here, we've got a online security system that we're building over here, and one of our key users and target markets are the business uh, travelers that have uh, that are homeowners, and they want to make sure that their home are secure whilst they're away. You can see on the left hand side that you've got a bunch of requirements over here and associated with them are value points. Now let's just say we deliver the first four requirements over there and that totals a, uh, a gives us a total of 24 value points. Okay, so that's a general idea of how we can use value points to measure our delivery effectiveness. Okay, now the second thing is that we can look at is our time to market. So what we have is, it's so important when we look at, at in an agile uh, program is our ability to release stuff quickly and uh, frequently, right? And so one of the key measures that we want to be looking at is how long is it taking our features or our requirements to be released into the market, into the hands of the customer, okay? So we may say, okay, we want to have a look and see from our idea, from the point whether it's coming from the customer or whether it's coming from, from ourselves uh, to the actual releasing that into the market, how long, what is that duration, what is that period of time over there? And we can measure that and that's a very valuable way of determining how well we're actually doing. Now, another point that I'd like to make is, is that when we're trying to release more frequently to the market, one of the key ways to do that is to actually split up our requirements into smaller chunks. And 
uh, if you look on the screen, you can see over here an example. We've taken that same example of the home security system and we split that up into smaller chunks, right? And we've also split up the value over there so we can release smaller chunks of value more regularly to the market, obtaining greater feedback as well. Okay, now let's move on to our delivery predictability, which is our third, our third um, measure that we have. How can we enhance and improve our ability to predict with some level of certainty what we are able to release to the market. Now that's so important for so many reasons, whether it's, it's we've got to meet certain deadlines, whether trade fairs or whether we've got marketing releases we need to do, we need to start marketing campaigns or other things. Being able to predict when we're actually going to be able to deliver something is so important. One of the key ways we do that is by determining what we can actually do. Now if you look on your screen, what you're going to see is an example from one of my pre previous programs. This is an agile release train of around, I think from memories, around 13 teams. And you can see how they're delivering along the vertical axis. You can see the feature points and along the horizontal axis, you can see the sprints over there. And you can see uh, how well they've, they, they, they've been doing. And based upon this, we've determined what the trend line is. And and in this particular instance, what we found out was that the original scope was too large for us to deliver when we needed it. So what we did is we reduced that to a minimum viable product and we brought down the trend lines and the delivery. So it gives us a lot of ability to actually look, uh, uh, project how we're going to do and make timely decisions so that we can have um, uh, make the right decisions at the right time time as well. So in summary, we've got three key things to think about. We want to improve our efficiency through determining our value delivered. We want to measure our time to market. Um, we need to split up our uh, requirements into smaller chunks so we can get those to market quickly. And we need to improve our, our delivery predictability so that we can um, enhance our ability to meet our key deadlines. I hope you found that useful. Um, if so, um, please sign up to www.sprintzero.com and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you very much. Bye.